What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Guys, I'm battling a bit of a cold here today, so what better activity than to get a figure out of the box and take a look at it? Today, we're going to look at RoboCop because, honestly... This thing is an absolute beauty. If you guys have been on the fence for this, maybe you've got the old versions, you're not sure if you need this guy, stick around, take a look at the photos with me, share some thoughts. If you guys like the video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe if you're new to the Ben Thomas Show, and let's get into it. I give you Ben Thomas. Yo, Dad. Here we go. So first of all, I gotta say, the box on this figure is absolutely amazing. The texture on the outside feels beautiful. I love the way the light captures some of the reflectiveness off the box, especially depending on how you put you know, your lighting in your display. I think the figure also shines incredibly well. I wanted to show you guys photos of him in the light box here, as well as those first photos where my display lighting is kind of casting those purpley blue colors all over him. Now, I think it goes without saying, for most people, Robocop 3 is really not the movie that they think of when they think of Robocop, right? You think of one, maybe two, but with Peter Weller. And I have to say, the mouth plate on this guy definitely looks like Peter Weller to me. Now, the accessories he comes with, I didn't realize that he comes with a die-cast gun, as well as a plastic gun. I like that you can slot the die-cast gun into his leg holster, and I'll show you that later. But the plastic gun is meant for display and posability, so that you're not weighting down your arm of your figure, which I really appreciate. That die-cast weapon, though, feels really premium in comparison to the plastic option. Now, with the plastic option, you can also take out the mag at the bottom. So that is just a nice little piece of accessories that Hot Toys often likes to include for us. But really, as I said, it's interesting when you feel the weight of this particular gun in hand in comparison to the plastic option. It really does feel more like a gun, which I like. And it's insane to me that the Peacemaker, because it's governed by WB, had to keep that gun slotted in his holster. So happy that I was able to get it out for that particular guy. Now, for the hand sculpts that it comes with, it's actually kind of sparse. There's not a lot of options here. This is a plastic piece that comes out, the spike. It is a little sharp though, but again, I'm happy enough with it. The shiny plastic is nice. I think it's weird that they didn't give us any actually sculpted hand pieces though for like holding the gun. They gave us these articulated fingers, which is great, but I always worry I'm gonna bust the shit out of them as soon as I start bending them. So definitely be careful there when you're posing up your figure. And because they are the articulated fingers, the instructions even recommend that you only use the plastic gun for posing, whereas the die cast gun should go in the holster because of its weight. Now it does come with this hexagonal base and it comes with this waist clamp thing that I feel is reminiscent of older school figures. Because this figure comes with some significant die cast components, He's a weighty boy, and if you put the jetpack on him on his back, which I'll show you here in a little bit as well, I'm shocked that this little waist crabber would even hold the weight of the guy, to be honest. I wouldn't totally trust it. Now, there were two editions of this figure. There was one that came with the battle-damaged components. It's interesting to me because the instructions in my figure actually show how you can swap this piece out with the chest battle damage. I didn't get that figure option, to be honest. I always felt like I would display this guy clean anyways, but I just wanted to show you how easy it was to take off the chest piece, how you take off the helmet in order to swap the mouth pieces out. He looks a little funny here, but honestly, it was nice and easy, and there is some magnetized uh, pieces there, which I also appreciate, because it makes the seam pop in really nice and clean. And due to this being my first Robocop figure ever having it in my collection, 
I was impressed with how nice it felt in hand. It does feel like premium material. That is a plastic helmet though, it's not die cast. The die cast components here, I do wish they provided us a map of where they are, but that's a criticism even still. Honestly, it feels really great in hand. This rocket launching piece is really cool. I do like the smoke effect with the missile at the end. The missile piece is really shiny and a little reflective and it pops in the gun really nicely. The arm there though, it was weird pulling that off because there's a bit of a rubber gasket. I was worried when I put pressure on it and pulled it that it would break it. But I will say one of my complaints with the figure so far, just in terms of aesthetic, is the arm joints right at the shoulders there, as well as kind of at the hip joints and the legs. It's very hard to get these arms pushed back any more in than what you see right here. They are meant to pop out slightly so you can get a bit bigger of a range of motion and posability, similar to the Iron Man figures that Hot Toys has done in the past. But the Iron Mans I find do a better job of having it look a little more seamless at the shoulders. Whereas again, you can see those plastic joints there. That's it, that's as far in as they go. You can turn it slightly or twist it slightly to hide it, but to be honest, that is a little bit ugly to me. I have a hard time not looking at those when I'm posing the figure up, and it does make it look a little bit more like a toy as opposed to a 1-6 scale shrunk down version of Robocop. But one of my favorite parts of this figure is this section on the leg where you can open it up and actually holster the die cast gun. It's really cool. Now you do have to make sure that the leg is pulled away from the hip just ever so slightly, or else you can't actually close it all that well or open it very well. So definitely read the instructions so you make sure you don't accidentally pull that off. Now the jetpack is one of those accessories that I said when I got this figure, I'd probably never actually pose it with the figure. But looking at this piece, it's beautiful. The paint job is fantastic. I love the wiring. I like the mechanisms for how it actually slots onto the figure. Although I will caution you, be careful you don't accidentally scratch the figure. You do have to get a bit of a, like a compression fit there. And there is that chance that you can scratch it or even break the plastic components of the jetpack itself. I also do actually recommend looking at the instructions when you put this piece on, because there are some clips actually that are meant to clip on the forearms of the figure and make sure that the jetpack doesn't slide around or go anywhere. Also the pieces that extend around the arms, they feel a little flimsy. I don't think that is a fault of Hot Toys. I think it is just by nature of design. They are meant to be movable and poseable, so just be really careful. I tend to manhandle my fingers a little bit sometimes, and there's always that chance that you might break it. Once it's on the figure, it does look really good, I will say. It's a shame that I'll probably never actually display it this way, but I wanted to show you guys what it could look like either way. I still think it's really cool, and I'm happy that Hot Toys added it in the box for us. But in the same breath, honestly, if they'd been able to reduce the cost of the figure a little bit and not include it, I would have also been happy with that as an option. Even if they'd given us the option with the battle damage pieces instead of the jet pack, I also think I would have liked that more. But again, I understand that the jetpack is certainly reminiscent of Robocop 3, which is where this figure is coming from, and I do have to remind myself of that. I love the paint job on the armor, though. The way it's capturing even just the light in the light box, I think is really impressive. The concerns around the figure not being blue enough or not being purple enough, I feel like for me, this is exactly what I think of when I close my eyes and think of Robocop, this level of coloration. The jetpack really does add a ton of freaking weight to this guy though. And with all the moving bits and everything, again, like I mentioned earlier, I would not trust that waist grabber to hold this bad boy up. If you're gonna display this in flight pose, get something a little stronger. Now it does come with the different mouth plates. Again, this to me looks exactly like Peter Weller, not the other actor that was in Robocop 3, which is a bit of a shame for that guy. I feel bad for him a little bit, to be honest. A total of four mouth plates overall though, I think is a pretty great offering with regards to this figure. This teeth one looks pretty good, especially with the exposed teeth there. I know that gets a little silly with other figures sometimes, Ant-Man kind of comes to mind. This little kind of weird pouty one I think is my least favorite, it's got a bit of a rabbit look to it, don't love that. And the middle one there I do think is okay, but to be honest, the figure mouth plate that I like the most is actually the one that comes stock on the body right out of the box. I think it looks the most like Robocop and that's gonna be the one that I likely display it with. This pouty one, just a little weird. It kind of reminds me of the pouty lipped one from the Dark Knight Batman Begins figure. But for my final thoughts, I think this guy's awesome. I think the price is really good for what you get here, especially with the die cast components and the jetpack. My main criticisms are, again, 
where you're seeing the shoulder joints and the leg joints, as well as even where the hands slot onto the wrist, there's always that little bit of separation there, and it kind of just looks like a hand sculpt, which bugs me just a little bit, but you can pose it away in your display, so don't let that affect your judgment of getting this figure. At the end of the day, I'd give this figure still a 9.5 out of 10. I absolutely love it, but I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you picking this figure up? Why or why not? Maybe you already have those original Robocops and you don't feel like you need that. Have any of these videos or seeing these figures in hand for other collectors changed your mind? Or at this point, are you going to be able to skip it? I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Sorry I'm losing my voice a little on the video today, guys, but I hope you enjoyed it just the same. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button for me. Smash the subscribe if you're new to The Ben Thomas Show, and I'll catch you guys on the next figure preview video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back.